Hi, and welcome to the second episode of Pokemon Ecology. Today we'll be looking at the Route 1 bird Pokemon under a lens vaguely similar to Darwin's finches. This is in a way referencing a piece of a game theory video many years ago where he briefly touched on this same subject. I'll be looking at it more closely, however. Let's begin. Up first is Pidgey from Kanto's Route 1. Its beak is clearly that of a grain of horse, but like all birds, it'll eat just about anything. Its claws are flat, which is likely for better support on the ground. Its fat and stubby wings mean maneuverability over long distance flight, which is sensible considering its forested habitat and ground dwelling habits. Its stubby wings help blow sand and wind for its various reasons. The fat tail means better propulsion off of the ground when taking off and easier speed to control in the air. Due to its ground dwelling habits as well, it's likely precocial, meaning that it's born with feathers and is capable of moving around. Its non-confrontational habits and brownish pelt complement each other, and the countershading of that pelt helps it blend in with the soil and the tree trunks. Birds that spend much of their time in trees usually hop around rather than walk. Pidgey walks in the diamond pearl and platinum sprites, but it hops in the black and white sprites, with the little steppy in place. Following that is Hoot Hoot on Route 29. Hoot Hoot's big and stubby beak could be a sort of young raptor beak which helps it break open nuts until it's more developed and capable of hunting Rattata and Sentrits. It does have two feet, but one of them is hidden in the fluff, which is kind of like real life owls. Its wide feet do help it perch on branches better. Its notably pathetic wings likely mean that it spends a lot of time in the trees rather than on the ground where it could be attacked. However, its lack of flight is accounted for with intimidating eyes which may scare off potential predators. It probably stays in the trees for much of its growth, but it must be careful to not fall out, thus selecting for better feet. The counter shading helps here as well. Hoot Hoot's fat tail may also help it take off, thus it may be capable of limited flight. Do remember that chickens and turkeys in real life can actually fly, just limited. This one may be altricial, considering Hoot Hoot is still clearly underdeveloped. Following that we have Hoenn's Taillow on Route 104. Taylor's wide and long beak is stellar for bug catching, but it's after bigger prey in this case. It's only as tall as Wimple, and it weighs less than it. It likely migrates just like swallows in real life, and its wing shape assists in long distance flight, being long and light, to catch wind without weighing it down at all so it can course on the winds as it sails. Its presence in the Generation 3 games tells us that it's presently winter in its home location. Assuming that Hoenn is in fact tropical, or at least heated, like Mexico or the southern United States. It might be precocial, it's freshly left the nest and is still wishing for its mother. More curved claws help for better branch gripping as opposed to the previous two entries. Additionally, most birds have a built-in compass that helps them migrate, going thousands of miles along generational routes of migration for bird species. Taylor likely has one of these, but it's not stated in the Pokedex. Starly, found on Sinna's Route 201, is one of the most popular of these bird Pokemon. Its beak is favorable to an insectivore diet. It may eat the insects out of rotting wood left behind by Bidoof, or by meals left behind by Shinx. It's the same size as, and weighs less than Krikatot, and it's smaller than, but does weigh more than, Surskit, meaning that these are going to be tough threats for it, especially considering that Starly don't like fighting, and will actually group together for better defense. Starly's round body and grouping habits, as well as the conifers on the route on which it's found, all three support that it is a colder climate in which it lives, that being Sinnoh. Its longer but broader wings favor fast and far flight, but not as powerful as Pidgey or as well controlled, and not as far as Taylo without resting. For whatever reason, however, Starly lack claws. I'm not sure what advantage this has, and it's clearly not an artist's neglect, because the feet are quite detailed. From here on out, things begin to get barren and more speculation focused due to the lack of Pokedex entries. p -Dove on Unova's Route 3, however, has inspirations from pigeons in real life, and it even has a seer like pigeons. These seers are, in real life pigeons, typically rich in iron, but we're unsure why. p -Dove's beak seems to be a generalist beak, which I mostly say due to its wide habitat of both cities and fields, thus having access to insects, fries, seeds, and all sorts of other foods. Their claws and feet are curved, but it likely walks along the ground as well as perching on various city available perches. Its wings are short and broad, offering maneuverability similar to Pidgey, which would help it to fly through cities quite well. p bodies are short and round like Starly's are, matching with the cold winters that Unova gets, where snow can pile up quite high. p 
Tito are described as stupid, friendly, and sincere, combining to make an adorable personality, compelling anyone to feed them just like pigeons in real life. Following up Pidov is Fletchling, who lives in Kalos' Route 2. Its long beak is heavily selective for insect catching, which matches up considering it lives by a river as well as the edge habitat between a forest and a field, providing plentiful insect habitats from which it eats, though no diet is explicitly stated. Its feet lack nails for whatever reason, which may be artist laziness. The legs, however, are long and slender, clearly made for running around on the ground. Their short and slender wings mean easy but not particularly fast flight, being unable to turn notably or reach notable distances. This pairs up decently with their running legs, as well as the fact that Route 2 is open aside from a forest running along the north, meaning that Fleshling can flee to the forest for safety if it needs to. The tail's striking appearance assists in its usage for tail signals. It's very communicative and social, but also territorial, likely using this along with chirps to communicate territory information to other fletchlings. Excitement doubles its body temperature as well as hormone production, which possibly relates to sexual territorial aggression. Nearing the end, we have Picky Peck on Alola's Route 1. Picky Peck has clear woodpecker inspirations. Its beak is made for drilling into wood for making homes as well as storing its food. Unlike woodpeckers in real life, this is not how they actually get their food. Picky Peck instead eat berries and store them in these carved holes, using the seeds as ammunition afterwards, which is a strange way for a bird to spread seeds. They lack claws, which is really detrimental here, and I'm not sure why the artist just refused to draw claws from here on out. However, its two forward and two backward toes are accurate to real life woodpeckers. It's not stated in the Pokedex but the tail is likely used as a sort of tripod with its legs for when it's pecking at wood, meaning that its tail muscles are quite strong. The final bird on the list is Rookady, found on Galler's Route 1. Its short beak is that of a granivore, and this matches its home being wide open grasslands, but once again the claws are missing. Its wings are short and broad, but that may not often come into play in this habitat. The short and stout body once again implies cold climate living, but its inspiration, the Great Tit, yes that is his name, shares this with it. Not that that invalidates anything though. After looking at it, you eventually notice the strange eyes. Why are its eyes going beyond the white part? That's because those aren't its eyes, they're actually markings. Rookity's real life inspiration has similar markings, but Rookity itself likely has these as intimidation due to Corviknight and Skarmory feuding. And that's the Route 1 Birds, or as I like to say, Pidgey and the Pidgeys. It's actually the name of the script document too. Let me know what you think about this in the comments and suggest what you'd like to see from me in the future. My last video had suggestions commented and I have an idea of what I want to do from those but it's always good to know what I'm going to be doing after that. Thank you for watching and remember to like the video if you did and subscribe so that you can catch my next video. Have a nice day.